Imagine this. It's a weekend. You manage to get a babysitter, round up your friends for the evening, and y'all head out to the comedy club to blow off steam and have a few laughs. It's grown-up comedy. You're prepared for a little off-color humor, maybe some profanity, something that might even make you blush. What you're not ready for is the comedian to start a routine about rape and about how rape jokes are always funny. You're feeling uncomfortable when another patron yells out what you are thinking. Actually, rape jokes are never funny. The comedian, the one up on the stage, the one with the mic, responds by asking the audience to think of something even funnier, something the comedian deems downright hilarious, the idea of the heckler being forcibly gang raped. Now, think of how that moment makes you feel, the, the pit in your stomach. Now, imagine the audience member was a man. Impossible, right? Because who thinks that the rape of a man is funny? Well, the scene I just described happened last Friday at the Laugh Factory in Los Angeles. A woman challenged Comedy Central's Daniel Tosh, host of Tosh.0, and received his gang rape joke in response. Her friend's blog response to Tosh's joke was has now provoked heated com conversation and commentary about comedy, politics, and who bears the brunt of being the brunt of our jokes. One of the most compelling responses was penned by my guest, Jessica Valente, my fellow columnist at The Nation, who joins me from Boston. Hi, Jessica. Hi, how you doing? Uh, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated by this conversation that is uh, occurring because it, on the one hand, you know, there's this feminist part of me that wants to scream, rape is never funny. <laughs> and then there's this part of me that, yeah. you know, you know, listens to obscene humor. Tell me the, 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 the argument that you made in your piece. You know, I, I think that we can joke about rape, we can talk about rape and comedy, we often use comedy to talk about tragedy, um, but I think it depends on how you do it. I think a good joke about rape is one that's subversive, not one that's terrifying. You know, you look at comics like Wanda Sykes and George Carlin, who I mentioned in the article, and they have really funny jokes about rape, but what makes them good is that they point out what's awful and absurd and horrifying about rape. What they don't do is belittle it or make light of the rape itself, which is what Daniel Tosh did. Right. It, it, you know, it feels to me, Jessica, like, like sometimes, and I'm sure, I'm sure you hear this also from young women. I, I hear a lot on campuses. Uh, you know, feminists are buzzkills, right? We just think nothing is funny. <laughs> you know, we just go around the world kind of politically correcting everyone uh, but it felt to me like in your article you weren't saying that you were saying actually no that that Wanda Sykes joke where she you know talks about how free she would feel if she could leave her her lady parts at home and therefore you know not have to uh, to worry about it th th is that what you mean by subversive kind of play that out a little bit yeah, that is what I mean by subversive, and that's a great clip. Um, you know, I think it's a matter of mocking rape culture, not supporting rape culture. I really think that, that humor is best when it's a tool used by the powerless to attack the powerful, not a tool used by the powerful to kind of reassert their power, and that's what happened in this case. You know, a lot of the outcry has been the idea that, that someone like you and someone like I should not be talking about this because we're not comics. And so, you know, what right, right do we have to tell a person who is creating creative, how to be creative. How do you respond to that? You know, I think freedom of speech is not the same thing as freedom from criticism. Mm. You know, if you can't take the heat, get off the stage. You know, just in the same way, Tosh is free to make as many awful, you know, disgusting rape jokes as he wants. His audience is free to respond in, in turn. And what's happening here is that a lot of his audience is horrified. Some people are boycotting. Some people are, you know, calling for Comedy Central to, to take his show off the air. And that's free speech as well. Now, so now let's say that they did. And I, I don't, it doesn't look like there's any move to, to do that. But would yeah. that constitute um, censorship? Is that the sort of thing that, that folks who are on a progressive feminist uh, worldview would, in fact, not want to happen? I mean, I don't think it's the best idea in the world. I don't think that that's going to really change anything. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I still think that that's the way that free speech works, right? You boycott something, and sometimes people get taken off the air. It's just part of the course. Now, let me let me ask you this on the, on the kind of like, you know, can rape uh, jokes be funny? Because it seems to yeah. me that part of the point is that even when they're told in exactly the way that you suggest is problematic, in other words, um, reinforcing rape culture, that they are funny to yeah. a lot of folks, that, 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 that plenty of folks, in fact, find it provocative and enjoyable to imagine a woman in particular being raped. 
Right, and that's where the conversation on its own, right? Why yeah. do people still find kind of traditional awful rape jokes so funny? And in part, I think it's because it allows them to have these really kind of antiquated traditional sexist ideas about women, but feel like they're really edgy and controversial for having those views. But I think a lot of us know, you know, joking about a woman who speaks her mind being attacked is not edgy or original or new. Any woman who's any spent who spent any time in a comment section has been told a variation of that joke a million times over. So it's a little bit, you know, cliche. Right. So, so in that sense, it's bad because there's nothing edgy about it. Jessica, I really appreciate you uh, joining me from Boston. At some point, you got to come on uh, down here to Nerdland in New York. Absolutely. Uh, Thanks. And, and, and also, folks should check out Jessica Valente's upcoming new book, Why Have Kids? A New Mom Explores the Truth About Parenting and Happiness. It's out in September. Up next, on the question of questionable humor, I decided to get a table full of comedians. We're going to stay on this topic. Ladies, wouldn't you love this? Wouldn't it be wonderful if our p were detachable? <laughs> Just think of the freedom that you will have. You get home from work, it's getting a little dark outside. You're like, oh, I would like to go for a jog, but it's getting too dark. Oh, I just leave it at home. And you, <laughs> and you out jogging. Yeah, it could be pitch black. You still out there just jogging, enjoying yourself. You know? And some crazy guy jumps out the bush like, ah, you like, oh, I left it at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's comedian Wanda Sykes showing us how you can make a rape joke funny. And, and as we look at rape culture in our popular entertainment, as it relates to the controversy surrounding Comedy Central host Daniel Tosh's recent rape joke at a Los Angeles comedy club, I thought it might be best to add some comics to the conversation. Joining me again are political satirist Liz Winstead, this week in blackness host Elon James White, Citizen Radio co-host Jamie Kilstein, and the managing editor of the Grio, Joy Reid. All right. Who here does rape jokes? Well, I would say, backing up completely, I would, I would like to argue the point that that wasn't even a joke. He was making a statement. Oh, so you're Tasha. at a comedy club, you're making a statement. Um, it's fair game for an audience member to go, I disagree with your statement. Because there's been varying reports on yes. this. Yes, what happened? Of what happened. Right. And there's a woman's report, and then the club owner issued a statement. And I find this very interesting, especially when talking about it from a comic's lens. And he said that Daniel Tosh got on stage and said, what would you guys like to talk about? Now, that opens up a conversation with your audience. And somebody yelled, rape. And I don't know if it was this woman or someone else said, no, rape jokes are never funny. And then all of a sudden, boom. If, if that happened, then yeah, you asked the audience what they thought, and people said something. So it's not a, it's not quite the same thing as being heckled. Being heckled, or being heckled for a joke you told. Yes. Where was the joke? I mean, it wasn't it like the equivalent of if there was one black guy in the room and he had said, you know, wouldn't it be funny if everybody just lynched that guy right now? Because it's not so much a joke as it is an attack on that person right. because he was obviously angry at that person. So making sort of a veiled sort of threat, mm -hmm. and that's I think the way it came across to the woman who heard it. But what's so sad about that, though, is is you know that with my. Michael Richards. It, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that, that actually right. happened. You, know, you have another right. guy who wasn't yeah. funny, and comics disowned him. I mean, they had, remember Letterman had to, like, sadly truck Jerry Seinfeld out, and he was just like, <laughs> I I'm sorry, I knew him. <laughs> and it was horrible. And with this, what shocked me the most, and I, we were all talking about it, um, emailing about it, texting with other comics, is that every comic... All these guy comics, liberal comics, progressive comics uh, that I admire, came out and defended this guy yeah. and defended rape culture. And what's so sad about that is comics don't agree on anything. Everyone's talking about <laughs> the comedy community. Here's the comedy community. Are you friends with Elon? Yeah. Well, Elon just got a special. I hate Elon. That's <laughs> We can't even get each other. We don't even have health insurance. But suddenly we have to defend rape culture, and it's like, comedians, assemble. That's horrifying that this is the sword we want to die on. Well, I mean, it's kind of funny, too, that the activism and all of the, it got so crazy because it's something about them. You know, it was like the narcissism behind, let's, let's hold this torch up was pretty hilarious. Right, and the thing here is that all of a sudden it became about free speech. Mm -hmm. And that was where this whole argument went awry because, like, this has nothing to do with free speech because he can say it. No government entity was like, you are not allowed to make rape jokes. Like, <laughs> right, you can make right. as many rape jokes as you want. But that dude what over there think, might freedom? blog about it and you might catch a lot of flag for it. Yeah, why and that's this, it. Why doesn't this girl have freedom of speech? Yeah. Why is it just like the rich dude on stage with a microphone? We know you have freedom of speech. You have a microphone in front of you. Yes. This girl also has freedom of speech. And, you know, when talking about hecklers, that's the craziest thing. Is the biggest argument I got, and I'm sure you guys did, is what? You're a comic. Like, people 
people were literally saying she heckled. She was asking for it without seeing like. And she probably she probably heckled while wearing a short skirt and therefore was really asking. Yeah, exactly. And what was so sad about that is like being left-wing comedians. We have been heckled our entire career. You want to talk about freedom of speech? I did a show in Texas, did something going after the war, had a Marine charge the stage and say, if you say one more word, I'm going to beat the out of you, right? And I wasn't like, I guess the equivalent would be like, well, I wish you got shot in Iraq. I talked about how awkward the situation was, especially because I had 10 seconds. That was my last bit. So I was like, dude, if you just waited 10 (laughs) seconds, and now we got to to start all over again. (laughs) And then, and we talked about it. I talked about how I'm very pro-troop. I said, you know, actually wanting you to get not to get shot is a pro you stance. Then we had a conversation at the bar about the war afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how you handle it. People act like he had no control over what he was going to say because some girl talked. Comedians get heckled since day one. He could have done it without violently threatening her. But, you know, and this is, I think, I think for me, this was a part of something that, that I'm interested in trying to figure out what we think we mean when we say free speech or right. what we think we mean when we're saying we're doing provocative comedy. I mean, I really do like like obscene, co- you know. You every it. once in a while, I like something that doesn't have cursing in it. But almost everything I like makes fun of all of the equity groups I care about, right? Yeah. So they kind of play with issues of gay culture, or play with issues of race. I mean, I miss Dave Chappelle at the core oh, no. of my being, right? But I mean, was the N word used every 15 seconds? In fact, it was. So what is the difference between like the consumption of that versus the hey, I know what I'd like to talk about tonight? Rape. See, I There's, just feel like it's that is almost an impossible question, huh? right? And so I just feel like you go for what you are going to say. Go for it a hundred and ten percent. But the second it passes your lips, it is everybody else's to judge. And if you're going to be weak and back down and apologize, I'm not going to defend you right. because why did you say it? Yep. And that's what I don't get. And I'm going to let you all keep jumping in <laughs> right now. As soon as we get back, there's plenty more. Stay right there. More after the break. I just okay. don't get it. I can prove to you that rape is funny. Picture Porky Pig raping Elmer Fudd. <laughs> See, hey, why do you think they call him Porky, huh? <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Elmer was asking for it. A lot of men talk like that. A lot of men think that way. They think it's the woman's fault. They like to blame the rape on the woman. Say, hey, she had it coming. She was wearing a short skirt. That, of course, was the great George Carlin, and we're talking about Comedy Central host Daniel Tosh's controversial rape joke and the larger discussion about rape culture in our pop culture that it has inspired. Joining me again are three veteran comics and one funny lady in her own right, Liz <laughs> Winston, Elon James White, Jamie Kilstein, and Joy Reid. Elon. Is there something about being a political comic, though, that is different? I mean, all, all three of you are comics, but you also are, are purposely and highly politicized. Right, which, which means, basically, that we walk into a room and we are aware that we are about to catch flack. Almost all, all of it's just like when I walk into the stage, I'm like, all right, crap, and especially what I do because I'm because I'm also the Negro comic. So I walk into and places, you wear the hat, and I wear the hat, and I walk into places, and I, especially even political stuff, and I go, so white liberals, and all of a sudden everyone loses their mind. But the fact is that I'm prepared for all of it. it well, any flack I catch, anyone coming at me, I'm like. All right, so I knew that I was, gonna, I was pushing that button. I'm prepared for you. This is how I'll respond. And the situation in this, in this thing here is that the response was something that was over the top. The boundaries that was around him, that was in, in his mind, that this, I can say this, and it's okay. And the culture decided to jump around and protect that. Right. And I believe that's the biggest biggest thing here is like people that work comics were running at me going how could you not defend him he said what you're a comic comics uh, uh, just say stuff and I was like I say stuff, but I also don't want to be a douche. I have that weird line in the sand where I'm like, hey, you know what I'm not going to do? Be a douche right now. But I mean, isn't there also the other issues? And you guys are all doing this for a living. Sorry, and I'm losing all my stuff. Is that part of what you're doing when you're doing comedy is that you're not doing it out of hostility. Right. Right? It, there's nothing hostile. You played the George Carlin clip. Yeah. There was nothing angry in what he was saying. It's funny because it's a slice of life. When Bill Cosby made fun of his kids, you didn't think he hated his kids. You didn't yeah. think he was right. angry or hostile toward his kids. He was just right. making fun of them. Right. And that's what was missing in what Tosh did. You know, I would would push back a little bit on that because, again, why people do comedy is that Sam Kinison was very hostile Mm -hmm. and very funny and put it out there, controversial. Mm -hmm. Dice Clay, you know, those people 
didn't apologize. Like, I am stuck on the fact that why are you saying it if you can't defend it? Well, if you mm -hmm. can't defend it, you are lazy and you apologize. I don't want to, I don't, it drives me insane. To be fair, Dice Clay said it, but he was the worst. Uh, <laughs> he was an awful man. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I sort of, I, I think I agree with you in the sense that I really like what Jessica said earlier, yeah. where she paraphrased it differently, but essentially, comedy is a subversive art. We probably became comedians because we were picked on, because we were nerds, mm. and you use it as this defense mechanism to take down the bully, to take down the bigger guy. And right. suddenly the bullies are invading our nerd space, and they're using <gasps> our tool. Bullies to, in nerd land. <laughs> and they're using our tool uh, instead of doing what they usually do, which is just be creepy towards women and better looking than us. And so I I think that, you know, because here's the thing, when you're talking about rape, again, rape culture, like, that is edgy and smart, Carlin and what Wanda did. Yep. Um, but to me, it's like, who's sitting in an audience being like, you know who's had it too good for too long? Rape victims. I really wish someone would get on stage and give them a, a piece of it. Like, no one wants to see that. Whereas, right. go after the dude. Why aren't we going after the guy doing the raping? Right. Why aren't we going after, you know, uh, the, the, the governments with their sexist policies and with their rape-enabling culture or the police who just ignore uh, rape cases? Case after rape case after rape case. There are so many big targets to go after. Yep. I like, well, I like that. Goes I back like to that what notion I'm of saying the is why are you say, bringing up rape at all if you don't have some reason to bring it up? Because right. if you don't have a rape, guy. is that edgy? Like, no, that's no, boring. Right, right. right. You, need, you, need a, you need a subversive rabbit. space to, to go to. I, and, and I. I I am now officially mad because bullies in Nerdland is unacceptable. Joanne